Yo, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the channel. This is the RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew. And I'm checking in, man. So it looks as though David Morrell's opponent has changed, bruh. And I don't know why they changed his opponent, bruh. I intend to take care of Ag Beko, then face Benavidez? David, what's going on, man? What's going on, bro? David Morrell is, is acting like a man possessed. <laughs> He's acting like a madman, bro. And he talking some cash stuff. Now, he did give Sinek Beko um, his props as being a tough opponent in the article. I will read that in a second, bro. But, bro, man, I talked to Sinek Beko. Literally, we have an interview on this channel. You would have to go to my old layout to see the actual interview. We talked about the Caleb Prince situation. We talked about the guys that he want to face in his career. I was going to put up that interview uh, if uh, Caleb Plant had won versus David Benavidez so we can give him another target. But, you know, you don't want to kick a man when he down. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if that make any sense, right? You don't want to kick a man when he down. And so when I seen uh, Caleb Plant lose to David Benavidez, especially the way that he lost to David Benavidez, I was like, I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, that's why I did not put up the Cinderac Beko interview for you guys. I was going to, but it's, it's still on the channel. You know, I was just going to refresh your memory about it. So you can just go check it out by just going down my timeline. You'll see Cinderac Beko and myself having a conversation. Anyways, though, bruh, this is a very big deal, bro. Now, this is going down on the Tank versus Ryan undercard. This is the cold main event of the evening. I don't even know if Tank versus Ryan going to live up to the expectations of this fight, bro. I don't, bro. Because every time I've seen Senna Agbeko in the ring, bro, and I just started my channel, so I'm not gassing, y'all. The, the only two fights I've ever had uh, of Senna Agbeko was Winford Harris and Isaiah Steen. And I guarantee you right now, if you go back and watch both of those fights, bro, both of them, you will see this guy First and foremost, in a war versus uh, Winfrey Harris. That was a war. That's it right there. That's the fight right there, bro. That was a war, bro. Both of them guys left it all in the ring. Then when you go back and you see uh, Isaiah Steen, Isaiah Steen is a very aggressive dude, bro. Very aggressive. He's very fast. He has great defensive awareness. He know how to lay the hammer down when it's necessary, bro. And he can get the clothes. Um, not only that, but Isaiah Steen, if he feel like your power not like that, bro, he going to get relentless. He going to let his hands go, right? This is just me going out of brain memory, how much I remember that uh, Isaiah Steen, bro. And saying that to say, man, he felt Son of Agbeko's power. And from that point on, he got to running, bro. He was on his bike for the remainder of the night. He thought he won the fight. I think that the judges got it right. Everybody else thought the judges got it right. The only person that didn't think that the judges got it right was Senna Agbeko and his team, bro. But he got to running. He was barely landing any shots. And he was balling up and flinching every time Senna Agbeko thought about letting his fist go. All right. So that just goes to show you guys how much power Senna Agbeko brings to the ring. David Morrell, on the other hand, I'm just now starting to learn because I've been hearing his name in the, the super middleweight division. Okay. So it's not much I can really say on David Morrell. I've been hearing David Benavidez talk about him. I heard Dimitri Andrade. He said he wanted to fight him and I heard Senator Agbeko say he wanted to fight him in his interview. All right. So this is one of those situations now where I have to go do my research on David, bro. I really do. I was one of those guys who felt this, though. David Morrell has not had enough time in the boxing ring to face the like of David Benavidez. But he's already a contender, guys. He's already a contender, so it doesn't make sense for me to be sitting here saying that he hasn't had enough fights under his belt because he already has a goal in his grasp. You see what I'm saying? So this is going to be a decent fight, to say the least. I do think it's going to steal the show, bro. I really do think it's going to steal the show. I'm going to read this article for you guys. We're going to get up out of here. So basically, in so many words, David Morrell started by saying, I intend to take care of Ag Beko, then face David Benavidez. All right, he says, I'm excited to be the co main event of this incredible night of boxing, said Morrell. 
Tank Davis is one of the sport's biggest superstars, and my aspiration is to one day be on the Mount Rushmore of boxing next to him. On April the 22nd, I'm going to dispatch my opponent in a sensational fashion. And after this fight, I want to... Uh, I want the Mexican monster, David Benavidez. He said, but first I have to get past a tough and very capable opponent in Agbeko. I intend to take care of my business on April the 22nd and then look forward to taking on David Benavidez in the fight that the fans want to see. Not to take anything away from what you're saying, David Morrell, but this is definitely a good tune-up fight for David Benavidez. I really do believe if he can get past Senna Agbeko, bro, he has a real shot to beat him. David Benavidez because Senna Agbeko in my opinion bro hits harder than David Benavidez that's just my opinion y'all can take it with a grain of salt I know y'all know David y'all don't know Senna I know Senna and I know David I've seen them both fight and I do think that Senna Agbeko punches harder than David Benavidez I think David Benavidez can knock you out with combinations all right that's what it takes for David. It takes a, a ton of combination punches to get you down. And most of the time, right, most of the time, some guys walk away from that. They do. They just walk away from the fight unless the ref stop it, right? Senac Beko, not so much, bro. You got to run. You have to run, bro. You have to run. Either you're going to have to stand there and swim without getting wet, or you got to run, bro. He's going to be laying the hammer down, so it's good to have this fight under your belt for David Morrell to go see David Benavidez because it's a good step up fight, all right? But they also had Senna Agbeko. Senna Agbeko was also able to get in contact with these interviewers. He also has something to say. He says, I'm very thankful to my entire team for this incredible opportunity to fight for this title. Said Agbeko, he says, this is a stern test against one of the best middleweights, I'm sorry, the best super middleweights in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the world. Uh, in this co-main event uh, of the biggest fight of the year. This is an opportunity that I relish greatly and is exactly how I envision winning the belt. I've had a long journey to get to this point, but I've always trained like a guy with a target on his back. I want to win the belt and be the fighter that everyone is going after. I ain't want the target on his back for real. I have a great team behind me and I can't wait to properly introduce myself to the world on April the 22nd, bruh. Say, kudos to whoever put these two in the ring, bruh. Kudos to you, man. Because this is going to be a crazy one, bruh. I really think this is going to steal the show. I really do. I don't think Ryan and Tank is going to be able to really live up to expectations for this fight because I think it's a one-sided fight. Now, I do think that Ryan has an opportunity to win that fight, bruh. I do, but when he doing all this crying and talking about the the uh, weight draining process and talking about Tank don't want to let him eat and talking about the contractual agreements and all, bro, that just that just turned me off about a fight, bro. To me, like I don't know about y'all, man. Some of you guys, y'all like to hear that kind of stuff. Some of you guys are are built off of making your content off of one fighter and, and all of that bro that's not me like that ain't how i get down man like yeah and, and yeah like i've already admitted bro i'm cool with sun back becca bro and you haven't seen him on the channel in a while because this is big news i'm not gonna just break my stride to talk about sun back becca all the time i'm just not gonna do that bro no offense to you son if you're listening but i'm just not gonna do that bro yeah we cool in the whole nine bro but the sport of boxing is bigger than sun back becca the sport of boxing is bigger than Errol Spence, the sport of boxing is bigger than Terrence Crawford, bro. Everybody got food today. Everybody got food today. I was like, man, I'm just going to continue to do my show and give my core fans what they want, bro. That's why I did not cover it, bro. I seen it just like everybody else seen it. I ain't say nothing about it. Come to find out it was a lie. Literally. And I knew it was a lie because everybody's sitting on Twitter waiting for these guys to say something rather than giving you guys legitimate fights every chance they get, bro. And just waiting out the process, bro. So, yeah, the sport of boxing is bigger than Tank. The sport of boxing is bigger than Ryan, bro. That's how I see it, bro. It just it is what it is over here on the RTH Podcast, man. But kudos to David Morrell for taking this fight. Kudos to Senna Agbeko, bro. This your shot, bro. I don't want to put no pressure on your man. I know he's not even going to be online until after the fight is over because he said he don't like to 
uh, distract himself by looking online. But he will be online soon. So, bro, whenever you catch this video, bro, shout out, bro, because you get an opportunity to live your dreams, bro. We was talking about seeing you and Canelo Alvarez on the show. And, uh, bro, you, you two fights away, bro. You beat David Morrell. You get David Benavidez. You beat David Benavidez. You get Canelo Alvarez, bro. <clears throat> excuse me and doing and get an opportunity to do something that has never been done more than likely i don't see canelo alvarez taking on son akbeko it's possible it's possible because he's talking about taking on david benavidez now it could just be all talk you know it could be hollywood talk you know sometimes you you just say what's good for the cameras and say what your fans need you to hear uh so it is what it is if he don't take the fight with david benavidez who can really be mad at him bro he he not just the youngest of men right now i'm pretty sure kayla plant though uh center hey center you wanted that kayla fight be david morrell be david morrell i bet you canelo uh, uh kayla be calling you i bet you he be calling you to try to get that fight because he 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 desperate right now he need any big fight that he can get and if i was you bro maybe i'll stall him out bro i'm gonna keep it real maybe i'll stall him out go see david benavidez and then go and see canelo bro because it's your shot man don't let what happened with you and caleb uh i'll shine what you got going on right now bro because it's your turn it ain't his but this is the rth podcast i'm your host nephew and i'm signing out shout out to david morrell man good luck bro good luck man they put you in the ring with a monster bro good luck then you gotta go see uh david benavidez if you win so <laughs> this ain't no <laughs> this ain't no dang <laughs> this ain't no dang picnic <laughs> this ain't no stroll in the park he gotta fight two tough dudes bro two of them bro and it's gonna be very difficult bro but if he do i'll land these two guys bro in center Agbeko and david benavidez man you might get your shot at canelo alvarez bro and get your opportunity to really be on mount rushmore bro you can really be on mount rushmore bro and you can take the crown bro away from david benavidez who have been pretty much begging for the crown for the longest bro you get to take it away from jamal charlo who's been begging for the crown for the longest bro you get to take it away from center act beko bro who's on his way to the top bro so this is a this is a tough fight bro this ain't for nothing bro this is for everything bro for a shot at canelo bro so uh whenever i see something well i know your fight's coming up in a I would say about a week or so, week or two. So uh, I'm gonna do my research on these two for real, for real. I'm gonna get to the knitting grit. Tell y'all guys they fight styles. Tell y'all guys who I actually see winning. Don't worry, bro. I'm not biased. So if I think Center gonna lose, I'm not gonna say he's gonna win. If I think Morrell gonna lose, I'm not gonna say he's gonna win. All right. But this is the RTH podcast, man. I'm your host nephew, and I'm signing out. Y'all take it easy, bruh. Peace. <laughs>